office, they're the famous faces known for dominating in the kitchen. But this year, these chefs have come under fire for all the wrong reasons. That is perfect. So fragrant. Showing a little bit of respect. G'day. Celebrity chefs. We love them on TV. But away from the small screen, there is something we don't love about Manu. Jamie, Neil, Zumbo, Gordon, Heston and some of their cooking colleagues. Their restaurants. A lot of them have come a real cropper. They're all trying to cook. They're not trying to run businesses. It's about to get crazy in here. This is one of my beautiful restaurants that I'm super, super proud of. Proud didn't pay the bills for Jamie Oliver. His Italian chain of Aussie restaurants collapsed in the last week, now in the hands of administrators. It's accessible and it's affordable. Hopefully Jamie can afford the reported $10 million debt his international restaurants are now running at. Where's your airplane? Who'd have thought 44-year-old Manu Fidel would be on his L-plates and caught for unsupervised driving? But he's also an L-plater when it comes to business. The My Kitchen Rules judge has had four restaurant fails in recent times, including Melbourne's Le Grand Cirque that closed just four months after it opened. And duck in, duck out that became a lame duck in less than a year. With, with these restaurants, you're paying for the celebrity rather than the food. Apparently diners expecting to see Manu at his eateries were continually left disappointed because he was, well, busy with his TV commitments and living elsewhere. And we get left with, what, replacement chefs? And then people wonder why people don't want to go to the restaurants. For an expensive night out, says our entertainment reporter, Andrew Mercado. All you're really going to get out of it is an Instagram post to say that you've been there. It's unlikely fabulously rich chef Heston Blumenthal has ever been to the volcanic rock known as Nevis Island in the Caribbean. But while his chefs cooked at Dinner by Heston Blumenthal at Melbourne's Crown, his accountants are allegedly cooking the books on Nevis. A Fairfax investigation is reporting Heston's restaurant empire is run through the island tax haven, allegedly resulting in him paying no company tax here in Australia. It's further claimed the restaurant is reviewing its payslip payments after staff complained about underpayments and unpaid overtime in a restaurant where dinner can cost hundreds of dollars a head. Often their ego drives them f way further than, than they should go. Now we've just sorted out our training schedule. Tony Eldred is a hospitality consultant and believes while they're great chefs, these celebs make lousy businessmen. I think it's very easy when you're in the eye of the press to become a legend in your own mind and think you're omnipotent. Rockpool and Quanta chef Neil Perry is another who's shortchanged his staff with up to 30 hours a week of unpaid overtime. And here we have the kitchen where Phil's working away with the team. Perry later settled with some of the team to the tune of $1.6 million. Um, it's not something you do with your mates every second day, so... You bet. Particularly when just the main meal can cost 220 bucks. G'day, I'm Adriano. Adriana Zumbo can't even make money out of dessert. It's not okay to treat people like this. And it's not okay to just expect people to work for nothing. His fancy Nance high tea room in Melbourne saw him face allegations of staff rip-offs as his empire crumbled. At the end of the day, this is not right. Administrators have been called in here too, with a reported 10 million owing to banks, staff and the tax man. They just say it's like hell in there working. <laughs> Are you concerned that some of your workers hate working there oh, and being course. there? Of course they are. Adriano's opened more restaurants than I think he can find skilled people to, to operate them. I'm Pete Evans and this is The Paleo Way. Then there's Paleo Pete, the thinner guy next to Manu. I'm not here to scare you or alarm you, and people call me an alarmist, but, you know, someone has to ring the bell. Well, he rang it on his now defunct Hugo's Pizza Joint in Sydney's King's Cross. He may be a master chef, but he isn't too good doing book work. A payroll bungle saw George Columbaris allegedly shortchange staff by around $2.6 million. 
I don't think he should be living in suburbia. And don't mention the problems he's having with his neighbours. It looks like a public toilet. For the gym he built in his backyard. <laughs> or those he's had a run-in at the footy, resulting in an assault and good behaviour bond. There were lots of smiles at the opening of Gordon Ramsay's Maze restaurants at Crown. How nice is it to be back? But can you imagine his language when it went broke soon after? It never ever made a cent. So having a huge name attached to a restaurant does not automatically make it a success. Turn it upside down. So why is it some of these celeb chefs can do all right back home, but not here? Overseas, the, the restaurant industry has quite different economics to what it has in Australia. And they're often highly successful, have low labour rates over there, but when they move to Australia, they find that everything's a lot more expensive and a lot, more, a lot different to what they're used to, particularly our labour rates but the price of ingredients. Please welcome Shannon Bennett. But MasterChef guest judge Shannon Bennett is a local and a chef of the year. It's um, an honour, but I really think that uh, I probably don't deserve this award. His ripped off builder agrees. It was all going well until I asked for some money. A lot of people after you. So too the guy who wasn't paid for putting in the lobster tank in Shannon's restaurant, Vu de Monde, where a tasting plate cost $275. I can't even really understand why he hasn't paid it. He would have made more in tips that day. You got anything to say? Make the lobster tank, the butcher, the builder. Seems our affinity with TV chefs is limited to just that, the TV. Enjoy. And it usually ends up in tears. I don't even know any celebrity chefs. But I bet she knows Ronald and the Colonel, where business is reportedly booming. Look, I reckon you're better off spending your money on buying one of the cookbooks. At least you've got that for life and you can try some of the dishes than some of these overpriced restaurants that really is just one night of your life and it's cost you a lot of money. Yeah, it's a tough business, but it does sound like they bit off a little more than they could chew.